Welcome back to the Crochet Karate. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do this dog coat right here. Now the tutorial is actually showing this dog coat and what is the difference of it? This is using thicker yarn with a bigger hook. Therefore there's difference of chain information when you're going to start this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to run this tutorial for this because once you get past the understanding that their chains are different then what happens is that it will work out. So for example let's just take a quick look is that uh, here in the blue one it says chain 26 to start. Because this yarn is the Bernat Super Value you're going to use a five millimeter hook instead and you have to chain 34. So instead of 26 32, 38 or 44 in this yarn you have to either do 34, 38, 48 or 64. So the information that you're seeing as you're going along is actually almost identical to the original pattern including the number of repeats after you get things started. It's actually really simple. So what I'm gonna require you to do is that you need to pull this in, uh, this up so that you can follow along with me on camera because the fact is is that once you get beyond the understanding that the chains are slightly different the dimensions that you see that it's trying to match are exactly identical to each other and it actually becomes really quite easy to be able to follow. Everything including the leg sections that you'll find on the one will match the other one as well. Just like you see now I made notes on the original blue one that we did but the information that you can see it says repeat certain things a certain amount of times. This one it says repeat uh, five times. The last one over here will say four. That's because this yarn is thinner and therefore it takes a little bit more time to grow. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna run this tutorial that you have uh, with this particular red dog coat because the pattern information as far as doing the crinkle stitch is all very much the same. The shaping is the same and you just have to substitute the information. So without further ado let's proceed into this sweater and just pull up this pattern and just cross reference and change what you need to change. As usual on the size of the patterns for your inspirations they have them color coded so you have small, medium, large and extra large. This is the number of balls that you will require to complete the size. So small and medium is one ball, large, extra large is two balls. So you will notice that this color breakdown appears throughout the pattern as you're being able to work. So you can see the, here's the size chest measurements so that you can measure your dog or get a rough idea on how big it's going to be and what the finished chest is going to be once you're done. So we're gonna go through a quickly a set of instructions. You'll notice that I have some highlighting done. I do that for myself when it can get a little bit complicated like this. In the world of pattern reading what's gonna happen is that there's four different dimensions. So there's gonna be the color coding that matches the sizing that you have. For myself what I do when it gets a little bit complicated like this because there are so many numbers I like to go through advance in the in the pattern and highlight the numbers that I'm looking for so that it jumps into my face. So we have the small, medium, large and extra large. So when it says to chain you have to choose the size that you're going to do and then follow the instructions etc. So at the end of the pattern at the end of the instruction it will say that there's so many stitches it will tell you what how many stitches there are left for the size that you're working on. So you'll see row number two does not have that any of that information does it? That means that row number two it's all the same for every one of them. It, do, it doesn't matter that there's different lengths all the way across because of the uh, four different sizes. It's still the same instruction that is in each. So whenever there's a decision to be made it will always show in the brackets and stuff like this where there is no bracket information. That means that it's the same for everybody. So let's take a look on page number two. So here's page number two. As I told you I worked my way through the pattern to read it so that I could actually determine which are the dimensions that I'm looking for. So I highlighted the stuff that I thought I might run into that might be a problem for me so that I'm making sure that I don't miss it as I'm going all the way across. So what I'm gonna do here, the leg openings, there's a note right here which I think that you need to do right now. So before you get started it says that you need to work the leg sections as they're separate balls. Took me a few minutes to figure out what that is. So you need to create two small mini balls like this with the same yarn ball and do that now so that you have it for later. So what's happening here is that there's a seam line that is running through the middle here. You don't see it because it's sewn but in order to do this side of 
the leg area you need a ball and this side of the leg area you need a ball and then the other third ball which is the main yarn ball will be the one that is working across. So if when you're looking at it from this perspective the third one is working our way over. So that's what you need for those. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna work our way through the pattern. If you are using the medium, larger, extra large instructions I'm expecting you to grab this pattern and to be able to follow the instruction but of course I will mention things along the way as well. So without further ado let's grab our yarn and let's talk a little bit about that because it's not the same as Bernat Blanket yarn that you're thinking of. So this here is Bernat Blanket Pet. So it's not the same as Bernat Blanket yarn. So this one here if you turn it over it's got ever fresh probiotic technology to it. So it's been treated with this formulation. It is odorless, it is colorless and it's already inside the yarn. So this naturally controls the odor of your pet. So on the orange here that's Bernat Blanket. This is Bernat Blanket pet here. You'll notice that they are two different sizes. So when you're going to sub, if you're gonna substitute with a regular Bernat blanket, you'll just know that the yarn is thicker so therefore you'll end up with a different size. So let's grab our six millimeter size J crochet hook today. We're going to begin to play and get started on your dog coat right now. This is an easy level project. Let's begin with the slip knot. So I'm just leaving an extra long tail so that I can use a tapestry needle at the end to weave that in. It is going for your pet so you wanna make sure that you deal with all your loose ends. Uh, uh, at the end of your project. So what we're going to do is that once you have that done you either gonna chain 26, 32, 38 or 44. So choose the size that you're about to do. I'm going to do 26. So just start chaining. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and go either 26, 32, 38 or 44. Please do that now. So I have my 26 done. You could have 32, 38 or 44. All sizes are the same instruction. Second chain from the hook. So that you got one and two. Turn it over. Get the back hump of the chain and I want you to single crochet in each one of the back humps all the way down the chain. Please do that now. I'm now at the end of row number two. So we're going to turn and we're gonna say proceed the pattern as follows. So we're gonna now start row number one. So we're going to create this textured look. It's called the crinkle stitch and this is what we're going to be doing as part of your repeat texture pattern throughout this whole thing. So what we need to do is we need to chain up one and we're gonna put a single crochet in the first single crochet or in the first stitch okay and then the next one is going to be one double crochet. So the repeat pattern going all the way across. The next one is a single crochet and then the next one after that is a double crochet and I need you to do that all the way across for the first row for all sizes for proceed the pattern as follows. As you make your way all the way to the other side the last stitch will be a single crochet. Now before you proceed this is an absolute must. Just pull up a loop and just hold for a second. I want you to grab a stitch marker or any kind of uh, spare yarn and I want you to attach this. Just slide it through one of the stitches on this side. Do not let it hit the other side of this project. This is going to indicate going forward that the stitch marker is on the right side of the project. So this is the side that is visible if you were looking at your dog wearing the coat. There is going to be reference in the future of wrong side versus right side. So if you put that there then you will know that this side is the right side so you don't see it on this side. So that's the wrong side. So put this loop back in and let's proceed then into row number two for proceed as follows in that pattern. So let's begin that next. Let's begin row number two. You're gonna chain three counts as the first double crochet and then proceed to the next one. I wanna show you something. See how this is looking really kinda compact and this is more open? The compact look is because it's double crochet. So when it's double crochet you are single crocheting right above it. So this is chaining three counts as a double crochet. This is a single crochet. So I'm keeping in count anyway with the pattern but if you can identify what it looks like it's easier. So this is a single crochet so the one above it must be a double crochet. So you're just gonna repeat the pattern as you know it. So what I do in my head is that I go single, double. This is what I say in my head. Sing, uh, this is double and then single and double and continue to do that all the way around, all the way down for row number two. So I continued all the way down to the end of row number two. The last stitch is a double crochet. So we're going to turn and work. Row number three we have an increase happening on this one here. So what's gonna happen is that underneath the dog's um, chest airing as before the legs start we need to open this up a little bit in the collar region. So row number three is the same for everybody. So it's chain up one and you're going to place in two single crochets into the first stitch. 
So one and two. Then you begin the pattern as follows. So it says a double crochet and then single but you can see that because see this is a single here. So you're gonna fill it in with the double and then the next one is a double. You see how it's more compact? So then that would be a single. So you just have to follow the pattern as you see it going across. The very final stitch when we get there we're going to put in two double crochets or sorry two single crochets right into the very end. Please repeat the pattern as you know it going all the way across and I'll see at the end making sure that you put in your two single crochets there. At the end of row three making sure in the last turning chain there the last stitch you're putting in two single crochets. So now we're gonna turn our work and move to row number four. Please do so now. Let's hang on one second. So let's begin row number four. It's also an increase but this time we're gonna use double crochets to do the increase instead of singles. Chain up three counts as a double crochet and in the same one where that's coming out of I need you to put in another double crochet. So it's called an increase. There's two in the same one. We're going to repeat the pattern exactly as we know it. So the next one must be a single. I can identify that by the stitch underneath but I can also read it on the pattern. So it's a single and then the next one's double and single and double going all the way down and on the very last one that we have we're gonna put in two double crochets. I'll see you there in a moment. So as I get to the end the very last stitch then row number four is going to be two double crochets right in the end. So we have one and two. Just like you see. So now you can see you can slightly see that it is increasing but not too crazy. We're now going to go to row number five. So turn our work and let's do row five. So row five here is for all sizes and then we're going to take a slightly different path after we get this done. So let's just do that. Chain up one. The first one is going to have two single crochets so we're doing another increase and then that means that the next ones that we have is that there's going to be a double crochet and then the next one is a single. So, so double and single all the way down and on the very last one we're going to put in two single crochets right at the end. Let's do that now. I'll see you there in a moment. So in the last turning chain there will be two single crochets and this is the end of row five. Let's turn our work. We have to go back to the pattern now because for those that are in the small version you're completely done this section but for the other sizes you're not done. So let's just take a look one more time. We've now just finished row number five. It says now repeat four and five a set number of times. See? The small is zero so you don't have to repeat anything. This uh, the next size up is one more time, two more times and four more times. So repeat four or five these number of times and then repeat after you get that done then repeat row number four this many times. So for the small there's no repeating required but you can see that there's other requirements then for the other sizes. Then after you get that done you're gonna have to repeat one row evenly in the pattern. So what's happening here that four and five was an increase. So basically you're continuing to increase to make the collar bigger and longer for the larger sizes but for the small size we're completely done. So what I want you to do now is that we're gonna work one row evenly in the pattern and I'm gonna start with that next because we all have to do that now. Okay let's do that. So for those in the small sizes you just jumped immediately from the fifth row here. The rest of the sizes you would have had to do your repeats before you can get here. So you have to look at the pattern and determine where you are. So you have there is a double crochet so that means that there's gotta be a single here and then this one here right above it is gotta be a double crochet that you see. So and then that means that the first one there must be um, a single. So just chaining up one so you're gonna single and then just evenly just as you're repeating the, the normal pattern all the way down we're gonna be doing double and then single and do that all the way down and then we're gonna start worrying about the openings of the legs next for all of the sizes. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming to the end of the work one and I'm just repeating the pattern as I know it and then I'm going to end with a single crochet because I started off with a single crochet when I was over here if you recall. So what I'm going to do then at this particular point is that I'm going to turn my work and you're gonna notice that the right side is facing up and because of that I can move on to the leg openings because I know it says leg openings is on the right side so we know we're good to go. So let's go to the pattern and let me show you a little bit about that. 
So in the instructions, you'll notice that this next row has all the different dimensions that you need. So it's either repeat the pattern across for two stitches or it's three, five, or seven depending on the size. And then it says slip stitch across the next four, 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 or six depending on the size. Then chain one and then repeat the pattern across for the next amount of stitches. So it's either 19, 27, 31, or 33. And then it says slip stitch across the next four and then the pattern to the end. The reason why I highlighted this is that the pattern to the end right here it says pattern across the next two. So there must be two stitches left at the end of this row that I'm gonna repeat the pattern with. So if it was the other sizes there will either be three, five, or seven that will be left over at the end if you're following your counts. So what I like to do to make it easier for myself is that I like to just not have to count too obsessively because you already have to think about single, double, single, double and then count at the same time it's kinda harder. So just look for this information that you see and it will make it a lot easier at the end. So let's begin this row. So let's begin the leg opening next row. We're going to chain up three counts as a double crochet because the stitch underneath it is single and then the next one is a double. So for this particular size then we are already going to then slip stitch across the next four. So we're just gonna slip the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And then we continue the pattern as we know it. So I'm looking at what is consistent. So I'm over top of a double right now. So what we have to do it says to slip stitch across says to chain up one first and then start your pattern. So this is a double, this is a single so the first one must be So the stitch that is sitting on top of is a double so therefore this is a single so therefore we have to immediately start with the double and then continue the pattern as you know it. So you can count the number of stitches that it's requesting you or you can just look towards the end and kinda count backward from the end which is what I would do if I were you and you were me. So I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of the row. I have a double crochet. So what I did is that the last two are part of the following the pattern and then the next four in a row are the slip stitching. Here is the double crochet and when I finished that slip stitching the first stitch out was a double crochet. So way over here. So it becomes a lot easier if you're kinda identifying what's balanced like a mirror. So the next four in a row will each be a, a slip stitch and of course your amount of slip stitching is based on the size that you're making. So just look at the pattern for that. And then um, you slip stitching across. Now before it had you um, do a chaining at, the, at that but it's not gonna do that this time. So because the first stitch that you have to do is a single and then the last stitch will then be a double. And then that was the repeating that was actually doing the first row of the leg openings. So what the instructions now say that you're using a separate ball and what we're going to do then is get our separate balls out and then continue, continue from that point. So what I'm gonna do is turn my work and I am just going to just fasten off this yarn. I want this yarn ball to be feeding the middle section of this area. So we're going to work one inch high. It could either be one and a half inches that you see or two and a half. Uh, so it's either one, one and a half or two and what we want to do is that we want to get the opening of these legs to be a certain amount. So we need to grow out this area. So we need, we, we're gonna have a hole that's left here and here and we're gonna be growing out the other section in between. So for myself I just need to get to one inch high from this level and we need to finish off on the right hand side because when we go to start the next side is that we want to be on the wrong side. So this is the wrong side of the project. So let's begin just showing you how to do this section. So all you're just gonna do is that you're just gonna grab one of your spare yarn balls. You're gonna do the spare yarn balls to the outside and keep the big section here from your yarn ball. You might as well use the big ball for that. So right where I fastened off just keep an extra long yarn tail so that you can use a tapestry needle to hide that. And I want to join it so I want to join it to the first one. So the first one I finished with the double so that means that this one has to be a single when I start. So chain up one just to get it started and then just single and then the next one here is a single crochet so this must be a double. So there's only two stitches here 
and you will notice that that was um, in, indicated in the pattern before. So you're turning your work. So this time it's going to be a chain one and single and then double into the next. So you're just following the pattern as is and it says that when you go to start the next side is that you're going to be starting on the wrong side. So this is the right side of the project and I already think this is an inch and it is. So you can see that I just went back and forth twice, once and two. So what I want to do is that I want to just fasten that off again leaving an extra long tail and I want you to do the sections in the middle and on the outside so that you end up with these holes in the in the section. So turn it back to the wrong side and begin again. You might as well do the middle section and then the outside and then we'll move on from that. So please fill that in now. So I've now got all the sections complete and just finishing off this one. What I want you to do and it's just easier if you do it now is that any of these loose ends I want you to hide them in to position. So I want you with the tapestry needle just to feed the needle and if you go back and forth inside the project a total of three times. So just going in, just go right up underneath the stitches. So one and when you pull on it don't warp it. So and then two and three. So go back and forth and hide in all of your loose ends at this moment so that you have a nice clean project to start with and then we're gonna start closing in the legs and continuing along down the body. So get rid of your loose ends now. So let's begin the next section. It's called the joining row. So this is the right side. We know because we've marked it. So we're gonna turn it over and go to the wrong side and then we're going to join. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna fill in this gapping space. So it's a chaining of four that makes this gapping spaces in and we are going to repeat the pattern as we know it except for in this area where we need to chain four. So let's begin to do our first pass. Creating a slip knot to bury it and then I'm just looking at to what the stitch was below. So I finished with the double crochet. I can see that and then I'm going to just join it and just chain one and then single crochet because there was double crochet below it and then the next one here is that it is going to be a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain four. So one, two, three and four and then just come immediately to the other side of this and what I need to do is maintain the pattern as I know it. So there's a double, there's single. So that's a double so that means that there's gonna be a single here and then double and then continue to do that down the row. So single, double, single, double, This is a double so therefore the last one is a single and then I need to jump across. So we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four and then just come immediately and I can see what is going on. So therefore this last one, this is um, gotta be a double and the last one is a single. So I'm just maintaining the pattern as I see it. And so we're gonna turn and therefore you have your spaces all filled in like so. Get rid of any more loose ends that you may have and then let's continue in the pattern. So we're now going to continue and let's get this party started. So we're going to chain up three. I'm maintaining the pattern as I know it and then the next one is a single. So we want to maintain the pattern. So if that's a single we have to put in four stitches. So the next one must be a double. Go right around the actual chain. So that was a double, single, and double and single. Just like that and then you're gonna maintain the pattern. So the next one out is a double and then single and then what I want you to do is when you get to the other one just do the same thing. Maintain your pattern over. Fill in this 
the four stitches and go right to the end. Please do that all the way across. So for those that are continuing along, so the small size you're actually done now and you can then start going into the back shaping. You've already got your five inches done from your collar area to where you are right now. So for the other sizes you have six and a half, eight or eleven. So you're just gonna continue to repeat the pattern. There is no increasing or decrease. Just go back and forth and then just get it to the size that you need to get uh, in order for there. So it could be up to eleven inches. So some of you may have a little bit more work in order to get your uh, spacing all the way there. So I'm gonna move on now to the back shaping area and let's continue to go. For the back shaping the next row we're going to slip stitch a set amount of stitches. So we're going to be able to um, go either slip stitching st uh, three, three, five or five depending on the size. So right where you are you're just gonna go immediately into the first one and just slip. So I'm gonna do it three times. So go into the first one, the second one and the third one. And then that's where we're going to start. So we're gonna start then shaping in our body like this. So when we get to the other side we're gonna skip the last three that are there leaving the last three unworked. So now we're going to repeat the pattern as you know it. So this one here is a single here. So it must be a double. And then the next one must be a single. So I want you to repeat the pattern up until the other side skipping or finishing early so that you have a number, a number of stitches not done. So in your case it, it could either be three, three or five and five. So that's what I want you to do. Please do that all the way across. Took some time but we pointed out that tomorrow isn't here right now baby an absent mind came to roam around captured you so I've now just finished the other side. So this is going to be my reduction as you see. And now we're gonna turn it to the right side and then finish off the edging. So I haven't sewn it together. So I wanna go from this side to this side. So up and over. And then I wanna just evenly space it as I'm going around. You can make this even thicker, the band if you wish. It only says to do it twice as far as like doing two layers of single crochet. But if you would like to have it more of a flare or even longer on your dog, you can add more. It's really quite easy. So let's uh, continue then. We're going to just grab up our yarn and then we're going to attach it to the one side. Just go right into the side here. And then just chain, uh, attach and chain one single crochet and when you go into the side of anything make sure that you go right into it like a chain work not into a space. So just evenly space your single crochets going all the way up and over. You're not gonna add anything on the turns just come around to the other side. So please do that now. So just evenly space a single crochet across. So just coming up to the other side I just equally spaced my single crochets. I wanna turn my work. I actually think the pattern on the dog that you see in the model actually has four rows of single crochet and I think it's been suited to fit the dog. So that's kind of an option that you have. So just chain up one and one single crochet in each of the stitches now going all the way across and you can go as many times as you need to go and then at the end what we're going to do is that we're gonna sew all this together. So just uh, keep an eye, make sure that if you're gonna fit to your dog you might wanna try it on before you sew it just to make sure that you don't catch any of its private parts into the, the base of that. I had a dog once where um, the sweater was a little bit too big and unfortunately the dog would uh, <laughs> would not necessarily hit the ground first if you catch my drift. So continue to go and you can single crochet for this row and you're technically done this section but you can add a few more if you want to. Okay once you're satisfied I actually did three rows instead of four. So you're just gonna take an extra long yarn tail from the ball and I have a ton of this yarn left. So you can get like tons of these little sweaters out of these. So if you're thinking about charity um, maybe a great idea. Just pull the loop finally through and you're gonna use that same strand and you're gonna attach the belly together. So I'm going to attach it with the right side facing down. So the outside and then just put the two together. And then just throw it through a tapestry needle like you did before and just match the edging up with each other. So just going straight across. And then just come, so just kind of like just group it together and just come straight across and etc. 
And so what I want you to do is just match up the edges on the, on both sides and then what we're going to do from this point is that we're going to add legs, uh, the leggings to the bottom. So let's do that next and let's just, I'm gonna meet you at the end of the sewing. Make sure that you fasten it in right and then we're good to go and we'll do the legs last. Okay, once you get to the very end, all you're just gonna do is take the yarn strand and then just go, uh, just make a little tie, which I've already done and then just weave it in and out of your work a total of three times. And then you're good to go. So we're gonna start on our legs next and let's begin to do that. So let's worry about the leggings just like you see. So you have to evenly space the single crochets around. So just starting off with your yarn and you wanna do the same with both. I would almost be inclined to keep the same count, therefore they'll be exactly the same. So what you want to do is just join it with a slip stitch, chain one and single crochet around uh, into the same one and then just start counting as the evenly spaced. So you say, okay, so we did the first one, this is second, third, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So 18 is my magic number. So I'm gonna join it to the first one. So I'm just gonna remember 18 for the next time I'm doing this. And now we're gonna do one, uh, chain up one and then evenly, or sorry, single crochet in each one. So there's 18 going around. I'm not gonna count because I know it's 18 and I've already got it established. So what you wanna do is both legs this way. So just attach the next one, get 18 around. If, it, if you did get 18, just uh, it makes it easier because sometimes when you finish something like, like, like this and you don't count, you end up with one leg that looks obviously bigger than the others and you yourself is probably gonna be your worst judge on that one. So um, continue just to single crochet around and then at the end you're just gonna join it with the slip stitch and then you're done and you just gotta do both legs and then both are completely done for today's project. Slip stitch to the beginning and then that's it and then you're gonna weave in your tails. So please do your second one. Maybe be back here in just a moment. So my dog coat is complete. This is the neck collar. This is what's gonna go over top of the back. So if the collar is a little bit too big, you can always lay it down and just roll down the collar. Therefore it'd be like a turtleneck and therefore you put the dog inside, its legs hanging out at the base and I gotta obviously weave in my ends. So you got the legs coming out of the base area there. You got your head and etc. So this would be, this is a small version. You can see that it's really quite small and then it gets bigger from this point. So this is how you would complete one of those dog coats and I think it's really quite fun and uh, it was not too hard to be able to manage as well. So until next time, have a great day. It's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So those are my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.